I'm Greg Demetrio. My day job is uh, CEO of Lorraine Gregory Communications, an integrated marketing company here on Long Island, New York. Um, my passion is talking to CEOs from all over the world in all types of different industries. So today our guest is Lisa McGowan, and she's the partner of uh, Fireside Strategic, which is a coaching and consultancy service to B2B middle market clients. Lisa and her partner, Dan, have created this agency because they felt that there was a humanity that was missing from the coaching and consulting industry. And they bring that to the table because Dan is a, a coach, a CEO coach of, with a long history. And Lisa is the M&A side, the consultancy, by her own estimation, the math nerd. All right, so we're gonna have an interesting conversation and I hope you enjoy it. And we'll be back in a moment. The Ask a CEO Show is brought to you by Lorraine Gregory Communications. Lorraine Gregory is an award-winning agency for digital and traditional advertising. Helping clients' campaigns succeed, they have been telling personal and brand stories for more than 30 years. The agency with a difference, providing strategy, planning, design, and production, including printing, direct mail, and video production. They are your one-stop marketing partner. Check them out today at LorraineGregory.com. Lisa McGowan, welcome to the Ask a CEO Show. Thank you so much. We're excited to be here. Well, my passion is to learn about CEOs and how you got to where you are. And your company is Fireside Strategics. And what is that all about? And how did you make it happen? I uh, was, you started my career as a management consultant. I worked for a big firm for many years. And then I was an independent consultant, really focusing on growth partnering with companies to really supercharge where they're going, breathe momentum into their growth trajectory. And it was very fun, but I always felt like there was a side of business that had a little more humanity, a little more energy. And Dan's background is in executive coaching and in growing and selling companies and combined with my background in management consulting, it felt like a perfect fit. And also, you know, the friendship was a wonderful and huge component of our partnership. And from there, the roots of Fireside Strategic began. So I'm going to apologize off the bat here because I did not ask you either to chronicle your journey from, you know, when you were growing up to how did you wind up in a position that you guys could put a business together? How did you get to where you are now? Oh, that's a good story. Um, so I, as I mentioned, I began my career as a management consultant. Before I was a management consultant, I actually grew up in an immigrant family. I moved over to the United States when I was a kid from the former Soviet Union. And I grew up in this very intense environment of always having to think creatively and always having to problem solve and always having to be very agile in the way that you move forward. Mm. And I always really loved math. I know, very nerdy, but I was always a total math nerd. So I um, ended up studying economics at the University of Chicago, and that's what brought me into management consulting. And my focus really was in the quantitative analysis behind growth. It was really focused on mergers and acquisitions and strategy to help really, as I mentioned, grow companies rapidly. And I did that for a number of years all over the world. I got to work in Japan and Australia and Europe and the United States. And while I loved a lot of the aspects of the job, I loved meeting with CEOs, learning their trickiest challenges, understanding really what's holding them back and help them figure out ways to move forward. I felt that there was an element of humanity that's missing in the traditional management consulting model. That often it would be, you know, us big groups of important consultants coming in with our analysis and dropping it off and leaving. And it felt like that it could be so much better because companies are made up of humans, leaders are humans. And if you don't inspire, if you don't align, if you don't breathe humanity into the work, then it won't be as good as it can be. That's so, right. Very interesting philosophy. I've always said that to people. You, who are you selling to? Well, I'm selling to a CEO. Yeah, guess what? He's human. He's a person. He's exactly. a person. You have to talk exactly. to a person. Just because he sits in the corner office didn't make him a robot. So 
the chat you you have to you have to couch your messaging in, to a human and, i you know, i like, agree you know like oh really <laughs> and I, think, I always think that that's funny when i hit them with that that's true it is kind of it's so it's so obvious but it's so foreign to tr a lot of consultancies it's really foreign to a lot of agencies as well they have amazing models they do wonderful analysis they may do fantastic highly intellectual work but unless you can appeal to the person then yeah so lisa you worked with all of these major companies in terms of consulting and advising and so forth what was the impetus to create fireside strategic so Fireside Strategic really was inspired by this fact that there's a place where strategy and humanity can come together, where you could take this really amazing analysis and deep market research. And Dan's background is actually in sales as well. So getting his hands dirty and building companies. So the sales, the legion, the strategy on one hand, and on the other hand, take into account the fact that people are people. So taking things like coaching, understanding the psychology, understanding the emotions behind why business is the way that it is and bringing them together. Uh, so that was the philosophy. And in my and Dan's discussions, as we became friends, we really thought that there was a power to combining these two things to supercharge the strategies and the growth that companies experience using both humanity and that business analytical stuff so how do you approach how do you approach a prospect or a new client it's a very good question how do you identify those prospects how do you approach them mm -hmm. so usually we will work with b2b companies that are looking to grow usually medium-sized b2b companies that are looking to grow often many of our clients are in the service industry because they're the people that are very much in the front lines of working with humans and those are the types of people who can't just use and peer analysis, they need to understand the people they're working with. And as far as the types of things that we help them achieve, it really comes down to very smart lead generation, very smart sales, informed by a very smart strategy. Hmm, very smart. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, and I, I use that term, you know, I, I, I say very smart, but when I say that, I really mean this combination of the strategic and the human. Exactly correct. You know, I just I just concluded a, a major interview with the international uh, finance guy, and that was one of his key things was that you need to have somebody to be a soundboard to give you good input because being a CEO can be a lonely position and who's your boss, you know? So bringing in people who, who are gonna uh, pull the curtain back and say, hey, guess what, Mr. CEO? Are you thinking about this? Are you thinking about that? Or how are we gonna implement this or that? Is very, can be very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we find that, a, you know, we host masterminds um, about every month, masterminds of CEOs. And when we just started hosting masterminds, they're one-time things, they come with their biggest challenges. Something that we always heard is, I have nowhere to go with this. I don't know who to speak to. This is a lonely pursuit. I know that I want to grow. I have these amazing ideas, but how do I know whether I'm working on the right things? How do I know that I'm on a growth trajectory that makes sense? And how do I grow in a way that's both profitable, but also is human and warm and takes into account who I am and who my team is, and I have nowhere to go. So that those masterminds really inspired a lot of the way that we position ourselves and some of the emotional connection we have to the work. Yeah, I always say that I'm not the brightest bulb in the pack, you know, so I need some smart people around me to tell me, you know, which way is up and am I thinking clearly? I mean, years ago, I was smart enough, minimally, <laughs> to, to create an advisory board that meets uh, we, we used to meet monthly, now we meet quarterly. And they're the ones who hold my feet to the fire as a CEO. You know, I have to expose all the uh, dirty laundry, if you will. And they're the ones who help me from, uh, keep me from jumping off the tall building. That's beautiful. This, I love your self-awareness, but I also think that a, a lot, none of us are the smartest bulb on our own. 
No, no, not at all. Not at all. And you know what? If you surround, you surround yourself with smart people, you can always be better, always. So the fact that you guys come in and you say, okay, Mr. CEO, let's take a hard look at what it is we're doing here and, and how are you going to achieve the growth that you want to achieve, again, is, is a super valuable proposition. So when you do that, when you approach a client, a new client, how do you approach your task in terms of understanding their business and where they're trying to go and how they might get there? There are many components to this. And I'd say it begins with the leader. It begins with what their vision is and what they want out of a business. I think so often um, consultancies will begin with market, with the company, with the finances. But I do believe that especially for a medium sized business, there's always that human who's running and who has a certain vision for what they want to accomplish in this world. So we'll usually start out by meeting them and understanding precisely what they want to accomplish both in their business and as part of their mission. That's step one. And then after that, we start peeling back the layers and that's where all of these other things come in. So understanding what is their company? What is their company's differentiator? What is their market? What are some of the gaps in the market? What are the pieces that they want to grow into? How do they want to develop? And then it, develops a very full picture, starting with the person and then everything that develops around them. It's a huge learning exercise, but we love it. Yeah, it's, it's very similar to when we onboard a client because you have, to, you have to get into the weeds with them to be able to help them. Most of them don't even know what they want when you go in and talk to them. I mm -hmm. wanna grow, what does that mean? Do you wanna be, you want to have a better image in the public? Do you want to have generate leads? Do you want to generate sales? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to find an acquisition target? What are you trying to do? And if you don't have those answers, you can't really help them. Mm -hmm. no. Well, this is actually, you know, you point right to why I thought it'd be so interesting with Fireside Strategic to combine the coaching and the consulting. Because uh -huh. the consultant in me would say, I can't help you. Or I would say, fine, let's analyze the market and find the top 10 opportunities for you to grow. I'm going to build you a financial model. But um, with coaching, taking a step back from being the smartest person and actually getting to the bottom of what is driving this human, you could actually help them identify and come to some realizations around where they want to go, where they want to be. And then that's the juicy stuff. And that's what you use in order to do the consulting. That's why these two disciplines come together so seamlessly. So without violating any confidences, perhaps you can tell us about um, one of your assignments. Sure. So one of our clients is the CEO of a pretty big accounting firm here in New York City. And the assignment actually began as a coaching project because this guy, he's very introspective and he wanted to grow personally. We started to work with him to help him just achieve his goals. But then as we started to learn more and more about him and his business mission, his business vision, he had a couple of very ambitious goals. First, he had these financial goals. He wanted to grow, he wanted to have more influence. He was had this very, amazing skill set and very precise, very good accounting. But then there was this whole other side to what he wanted to accomplish, which was to empower people by taking some of the numbers off their plate. He wanted to see them thrive. He wanted to see them do personal development. He wanted to see them grow their own firms. And there was so much energy and humanity to what he wanted to accomplish in this world. So after we understood this bigger goal, we started to work with him on two different pieces of his business. One was helping him with his 90 day planning. He has a strategic process by which he reviews everything he does every quarter and adjusts his plan going forward. And before we started working with him, it was kind of a reactive process where he would get information from his staff and from his clients and react to that. A lot of companies, a lot of mid-sized companies tend to do that. They'll get feedback and they adjust and they adjust, which is great. I think it's really important to get feedback. But he had the, a bigger vision 
something that went beyond what was already happening. So we helped him through this 90 day process of partnering with him and helping him develop his strategy using his vision, as well as understanding of market dynamics. We helped him become proactive in how he does his strategic planning. And as a result of that, his vision got so much bigger and he actually started to implement very clear and precise things in his company to fuel his growth, both financially, but also help bring to life this bigger mission that he had, which included partnering with more entrepreneurs, which included partnering with executive coaches. And suddenly his life not only became more profitable, but a lot more interesting, a lot more human. Interesting. Interesting. And then, so you get involved with the nuts and the bolts of these businesses that you work with. So culture is really important nowadays. Do you, do you get involved with helping develop a culture in particular companies? We definitely have an influence on the culture. We're not an HR firm. I would by no means say that we come in and start managing the day-to-day -day of how people are managed and how they show up at work. But our philosophy is that culture is the, in many ways, the output of the way that the company does its job. So by helping company do growth in a particular way, by helping CEOs find the human side of growth, that moves its way down through the company and impacts the culture dramatically. So for example, with this client that we just talked about, he started out being very, you know, a practical normal accounting firm. There's nothing wrong with that. And the culture in his organization reflected that. It was very professional. To be honest, it was a little dry, but after he started infusing his mission into his work, after he started working with entrepreneurs and coaches as part of his vision and his passion, yeah. suddenly his team was involved in projects that are spicy, they're interesting, there's energy behind them. And his team got a lot more excited and they became happier, they became more engaged. So I find that by helping companies with strategy that's human centric, the culture adjusts in a way that's very positive. Well, isn't the saying culture will eat strategy for lunch? <laughs> I like that. So, like so we need to take a bit of a commercial here, let the sponsors in so they can pay some of the bills. So if we take a little pause, uh, we'll be back in a moment. The Ask a CEO Show is brought to you by Lorraine Gregory Communications. Lorraine Gregory is an award-winning agency for digital and traditional advertising. Helping clients' campaigns succeed, they have been telling personal and brand stories for more than 30 years. The agency with a difference, providing strategy, planning, design, and production, including printing, direct mail, and video production. They are your one-stop marketing partner. Check them out today at LorraineGregory.com. And we're back with Lisa McGowan from Fireside Strategic. Lisa, interesting conversation so far about how you guys are coaches and, and consultants for, for uh, companies. Is there a particular industry that you guys focus on? So our biggest focus is B2B service companies. So it doesn't have to be one industry. Um, it, I know I'm like as a consultant saying that my work transcends industry, but I think it has, there are more similarities in the types of companies that we work with, more in the types of challenges that they deal with. So when you're working with B2B companies, it's a very particular type of sales cycle they have. It's a very particular type of lead gen cycle that they have. Mm -hmm. It's a very particular type of culture that they have. They often have to service their employees. and if they're a medium-sized company, I find that they're usually big enough to have big audacious growth goals, but they're still small enough that the CEO, usually the ideal client for us is the CEO, or still has influence over the culture, coming back to that, and the day-to-day -day operations of the company. So when, when you're inside an assignment, um... Have you ever seen a situation where the CEO is just not receptive or too recalcitrant to take your advice? Yeah, that happens. 
I find that, you know, it's tricky. On one hand, when you're a coach consultant, your job is to give advice. On the other hand, your job is to hear the CEO and to be them and to service them in the way that they want to be serviced. So we've definitely been in situations where there's a CEO that doesn't want to do the growth thing that we think would be best. And as advisors and as consultants, as coaches, it is our job to take a step back and dig into why the CEO feels a certain way and see them and hear them for where they're coming from. Interesting. Interesting, because, you know, you could preach so much to the choir and then eventually the choir is going to be out of tune. Uh, <laughs> you know, we take the position that we want to be a partner uh, from Jump Street. So when somebody starts to think about a marketing campaign, we want to be there as soon as the thought processes itself. We want to be a partner at the table. We want to talk about strategy. We want to talk about tactics. We want to talk about campaign longevity. What's the message? What's the brand look like? How are we going to tell a story? All of those things. And many times it's a battle uh, to bring the CEOs and the executives along because they don't necessarily see what we see as advisors. Mm -hmm. uh, should it be easy enough to say, okay, this is what we're going to do and to get the CEOs to say, sure, let's do that. <laughs> I wish it was that easy, right? But it, it's, it becomes, especially in B2B, right? Yeah. B2C, you can throw so much against the wall and you're going to get success at some point. B2B is completely different when it comes to marketing and campaigns and so forth, messaging and so forth. Especially you mentioned the accounting firm. How far afield can you go with the message of an accounting firm? We do numbers, right? That's what we do, right? But you need to create the story that goes behind that. So sometimes, like you just said, they don't always agree. And you have to take a step back and you have to go, okay, why is he not agreeing with me? There's something here that I need to find out about so that I can either craft a situation that he's comfortable with or I hate to do it, say, thank you very much, but we'll see you later, yeah. right? So I hope that doesn't happen to you guys. I'm sure you're pretty proficient in coaching and so forth and you can turn them on a dime, I'm sure. but. Uh, it, it just makes your job more interesting. It's not cookie cutter ever. Right? No, 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 it's never cookie cutter. And, you know, there's a there's a role that data has to play in all this. So if you I, I told you in the beginning of our interview, I'm a total math nerd. And when I come to a CEO with a suggestion, I will rarely just say, this is what I think. Let's do it. Usually I will come with market analysis, with consumer insights to mm -hmm. indicate why a certain initiative makes sense. And ideally, if the logic holds up, the CEO will understand there's not much argument to be had. But so many decisions in business are nuanced and data alone will only take you so far. And then this is where emotions come into play and the CEO's own vision and mission and whatever gunk is stuck in their system will be a part of the decision. And I think it's really important to not ignore that. And you're right. Sometimes if it's just not going to work, there's, there's no point of forcing it because it's their company. You need to move on. You need to move on. So rather than keep you all day, which I could easily do because you're very interesting and, and fun to talk to, uh, tell the audience about the best piece of advice that you've ever received. And it can be personal or business or both. You know, it's uh, it's my mom's birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, mom. Thank you. I'll let her know. And we were just sitting uh, and having coffee before this interview and chatting. And I asked her, mom, share some wisdom with me. I love getting wisdom from you. And she said, you know what? It's been a very tumultuous and intense year for, for me, for all of us, for the whole world. But what I'm learning is that we'll always figure it out. We will always figure it out. 
And I, this is a fresh piece of advice, but that resonated with me so much because there have so, been so many situations where something gets thrown at us, some really tricky problem, which feels impossible. You know, that like emotional reaction when you can feel your stomach coming up your throat, you're like, oh no, I'll never figure this out. It's impossible. And never, never have we not figured it out. True. So Give true. it time. So true. Thanks, mom. That was a great piece of adver ad advice on your birthday. I love her. Thanks for the present. I appreciate I'll let her know. It. You know, it's funny. When I talk to CEOs and I ask that question, I can't tell you how many times what came from their mother or their father or a close relative is what they identify. Um, I would probably be remiss if I said it was well above 80%. I it just goes it. to show how important those people are in our lives. Uh, I know mine is from my father. He didn't have an eighth grade education. And he said, the best thing you can do is spend less than you take in and you'll never be in financial trouble. So brilliant and so simple. Right? I mean, bedrock, that's foundational stuff coming from a man who worked with his hands and didn't have an eighth grade education because he had to go support his family. And that's very brilliant. Very wonderful. You know what that tells me when people tell me that? That they had a great foundation. Mm. They had people who, who, who gave them the wisdom of their years to help them along. And I, I don't think you can ever buy that, replace it, learn it uh, anywhere else other than from the foot of your mother and your father. So I appreciate you sharing that and tell mom we love her a bunch. I will. I appreciate it, too. You know what you said? You're a father and a grandfather and a great grandfather. Can you imagine that down the line, there will be all these people in the world that would say, my father, grandfather, Greg, hope, told me I the wisest thing. I surely hope so. I hope that's the case. My mother, on the other hand, said, keep talking because they only hear 10% of what you say and you don't know what the 10% is. So there you go. There's the one from mom. That's also good advice. I like it. Brilliant parents. So Lisa, tell people, um, tell the audience how they can get a hold of you guys. Um, either you know whatever. Give it, give us your, your your elevator pitch. So if you want to have a more profitable, more human, more connected company, and have a soundboard for your trickiest decisions, and make sure that you and your team are doing the right things that help you grow. You could reach us at firesidestrategic.com. You could email me personally at Lisa at firesidestrategic.com. That's L-E-E-Z-A at firesidestrategic.com. Or you could find Dan and me on LinkedIn. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. So everybody, if you liked what you heard and saw, uh, please, uh, you can go to YouTube on our Greg's Corner office to uh, capture the video. And you can go to all your favorite streaming platforms to catch the podcast, uh, which is Greg's Corner Office, Ask a CEO. And if you like it, please share it, like it as far and wide as you can, and you'll be giving us a big boost up. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you very much again. Thank you.